Elon Musk is doing all he can to end Twitter censorship. Get ready for a wave of illegal aliens. And the Wall Street Journal gives me another reason to keep subscribing to them. This is Gene, you're listening to Dumbass is Talking Politics. Hey, hey, this is Gene. Welcome back to Dumbass is Talking Politics. So, you notice I took off Thursday and Friday. Maybe you noticed, maybe you didn't, I don't know. There was a reason. It was Cesar Chavez's birthday. Cesar Chavez Day in California. If you don't know who Cesar Chavez is, he's the guy who um, unionized the agricultural the, the agriculture field. So basically, the pickers of the fruit or whatever they happen to be picking at the time. Fruit, vegetables, guys like that. Guys you see in the fields. Now, I think California didn't quite understand this. Um, Cesar Chavez was very anti-illegal alien. Uh, I'm pretty sure the reason they picked him was because he was a foreigner. He was from Mexico. He was an American citizen, died an American citizen, but he was very much against illegal immigration. He was very much against the Bracero programs of the 70s and 80s. So I'm not really sure... I mean, this guy used to organize mobs that would go and um, beat illegal immigrants who tried to get jobs in the fields with chains and pipes. This was not exactly the friend to the illegal Mexican immigrant or whatever they want to call him. So, but, okay, Josie got a couple days off. We went to the zoo. Then we had a, I don't know, it was baby shower on Saturday. We didn't do it. We were so tired yesterday. We didn't do beans. So, but we missed a lot. A lot of things happened last week uh, between uh, Thursday and today. Uh, but first things first, we got to just start this whole thing on a real light note. Now, I am going to start calling this stuff Kamala isms because she just, she is a woman when she speak, you I can't believe she went to law school. I can't believe she's a lawyer because uh, she's just so bad at speaking. And you, I can't imagine what she's like in front of a judge if she's ever, for all we know, she's never been in front of a judge. But she just, for some reason, they keep putting her in front of a camera. And every time they put her in front of a camera, she just looks like, sounds like a moron. Here she is with Joy Reid, and she's talking about a trip to Louisiana that she went on. And... I don't know what she was trying to get at with why she was in Louisiana. It didn't make any sense. Listen. So I am here um, because this is a community in the Mississippi Delta that has a, a, a long history of, of being part of America's history, um, including having the needs that, that should be met. Okay, she was in Mississippi. Sorry, I said I said. Uh, Al- I don't know, Louisiana, same thing, Mississippi, Louisiana, Missouri, whatever. Um, But you just notice that all she does is she makes a short answer. I'm here because to support some bill or something. No, she makes the long answer. Uh, Mississippi has a long history in American history. And what in the hell is she talking about? But that wasn't the worst one. This one is when she was in Jamaica, and it, she was talking about COVID relief for Jamaica, uh, and uh, they, how the United States was going to send COVID relief so that we could relieve them from COVID because they need relief from COVID. And the relief reason they need relief is because of COVID. So here she is. We also recognize just as it has been in the United States for Jamaica, one of the issues that has been presented as an issue that is economic in the way of its impact has been the pandemic. So to that end, we are announcing today also that we will assist Jamaica in COVID recovery um, by assisting in terms of the recovery efforts in Jamaica that have been essential to, I believe, what is necessary to strengthen not only uh, the, the, the issue of public health, but also the economy. You know, people keep talking about, need, you know, needing to implement the 25th Amendment against Joe Biden because he's going off. He's he's losing his stuff. And I, I personally think it's just because you got to feel sorry for the guy. The guy is really not there anymore. But this is what we're going to get. 
I I don't know. I think they I think Joe Biden even makes more sense than she does half the time. And I don't know. She just says the same. She puts the she puts and you we already played a bunch of her gaffes in last week. But she seems to just say the same thing over and over again, just review versus the words or puts them in a little different order and just filibusters. And she sounds absolutely terrible when she does it. I'm sure. And, and the thing is, what's really surprising is they continue to put her out there. They just keep continuing to put her out there. I don't know. Hey, go ahead. I, I think she's fine. I think the whole thing's funny. I just can't believe she's a lawyer. I'd like to see what, you know what? Let, let's take a look. What college did she go to? Because you got to wonder if this is a college that she should actually, you should send your chi- your children to. I can't believe she would have gone to an Ivy League school, but let's see. I'm going to look this up right now on air. And it's education, Hastings College of Law, Howard University in Westmont, and Westmont High School. Okay, those aren't terrible universities, but definitely not Harvard. Thank God for Harvard and Yale. She didn't go there. Okay, so let's get some news into some news. So Kansas and North Carolina will be playing for the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship tonight. Uh, Kansas beat the garbage out of Villanova. I mean, beat the garbage. It was a terrible game. Um, I just saw the Duke game today where North Carolina played Duke and North Carolina squeaked it out. It took an 11-0 run and a 13-0 run for North Carolina to squeak by. They won by four. It was a good game. Um, it was Mike Kruzhenevsky's. I hope I I know I pronounced that incorrectly. It's his last game. So it's good that he got to the, the final four. He gets another ring. Um, too bad he didn't make it to the championship. That would have been really nice. In other news, um, uh, Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk has bought up 9.2% of Twitter stocks. That is four times what it, what owner what Twitter founder Jack Dorsey owns. So he's one now one of the leading owners of the stock. Now he did this because he's just tired of the censorship, and he was talking about this last month where he said maybe someone asked him hey maybe you should start a new platform and he said you know i'll think about it but what he did right is he said no i'm not going to start a new platform i'm going to take over this platform i think that's a great idea here's the problem with the platforms is trying to start a new platform is it's they they're already behind one and two when you create a new platform it's got to be a platform that is you you're usually like conservative platforms and those don't really work someone needs to create and they're basically twitter lookalikes they look like getter and even uh parlor they're just twitter lookalikes not really excited like getter i'm on getter but i don't really do much on getter because it's considered the conservative outlier outlet that's what they're considered i don't want a conservative outlet i've i've been i brought this up to you before i want to see the chaos and the idiocy of the the left on twitter well anyway so he's going he's going for it uh because he has dumped so much money into twitter stock uh twitter stock is trending way up it's up 26 percent since he started putting in since he started putting money into, since he started buying out their stock. So it's going to be interesting to see what Twitter does. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens. Okay, in other news, uh, the Biden administration has decided it's time to end Title 42. So you know what that means? Be prepared for illegal immigration numbers to triple. Now, if you don't know, Title 42 is a law that the Trump administration put up that allows the U.S. government to send back illegal aliens because of disease or the China virus. Now, here's the kicker. Why Trump had to do that? You shouldn't be allowed here if you have any communicable disease. That includes HIV. That includes pregnancy, as far as I'm concerned, shouldn't be allowed here. That includes um, 
uh, herpes, any kind of communicable d disease should not be allowed. That person should not be allowed in the country. But because of the China virus, Trump implemented, and then the Trump administration was, uh, the Border Patrol under the Trump administration was sending illegal aliens out. It has been, it is estimated. Now, this could be a conservative. I don't know if I buy this, but it is estimated that we could go up to 18,000 that illegally cross per day. That's 540,000 a month and 3 million within six months. This is insane. Today, we have between five and 6,000 illegal crossings per day, and that's high. Under the Trump Amer under the Trump administration, there were about two thousand crossing illegal crossings a day. The Biden administration bound down to the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, and the Center for Disease Control. Yeah, we can end the policy. We're not in that much trouble. Now, here's the thing that bothers me: the CDC said it was time to end the policy. When is it that a bureaucracy like the CDC has any say in? policy. The CDC should sit back and say, well, if you'd want to, you can. And then the Biden administration ends the policy. In the end, the Biden administration does end the policy. And they, they said this without offering any, quote, science, end quote. Remember that whole thing? Okay. Dave, Tony Fauci is on television saying that we could see, because of this new um, Omicron variant, BA2, we could see further restrictions within this country. If Tony Fauci is saying that, and we're supposed to believe him, what science does the CDC have to say that allowing illegal immigrants into this country, and we don't have to worry about the BA2 variant? Very strange. And of course, this has nothing to do with, with science or the disease. They don't care about that. This has everything to do with getting as many illegal aliens into this country as they can. Hey, newsflash, good job on that. When we start having another border crisis, it's going to make us forget about the gas crisis. It's going to make us forget about the war in Ukraine. It might even make us forget about the slap heard around the world by Will Smith. But it's going to be hard to sit back and, and ignore 18,000 a day coming over the border. You know that's going to be a mess. And by the way, there is complaints right now as to who's coming across the border. Because apparently it's not just Mexicans, it's not just Guatemalans, it's not just Hondurans, it's Haitians or, or El Salvadorians, it's Haitians it's Middle Easterners, and it's now Russians. They're wondering who is coming into this country and staying in this country. Middle Easterners and Russians? Are we even concerned about terrorism at all? All right, and another story, uh, because I, I missed a couple. Uh, this one just broke this week, and uh, uh, the admin Biden administration press secretary, Jen Psaki, is leaving the White House. I'm a little shocked it took her so long. I really, She's going to leave sometime at the end of spring, beginning of summer. I thought she was going to leave a lot earlier than that. She got a new job. She's going to MSNBC. That's not a shock. At least she won't have Peter Ducey asking her any questions. MSNBC is about as leftist as it can get. Now, there are some ethics questions being thrown out there. I heard them today. Uh, I don't really care about ethics questions the the big the big issue here is did she actually make this deal make this deal while she was press secretary with MSNBC and isn't that an ethical problem well i don't know if it's an ethical problem or not but you know what it really doesn't make any difference she's going to be gone anyway so what let her re resign they can sit and argue that California news, because California isn't screwed up enough. The City Council of Palm Springs unanimously passed a bill in March, uh, late March, March 24th, to provide $200,000 to DAP Health and Queer Works to design a program and apply to state funding. What is that program? A universal basic income for transgender and non-binary people. 
What they want to do is they want... The state of California has $35 million they put into programs such as these. So Palm Springs wants to get some of that money so they can test, do a test of universal basic income for transgender and non-binary, and that income would be between $600 and $900 a month. Now, two things about this. Oh, first off, this is completely unconstitutional. Someone's going to sue. Um, and they're going to win that lawsuit. It's not even going to get to the Supreme Court because it's such a stupid argument. Yeah, you're basically giving money to people. You're discriminating against other one group of people and and giving benefits to others. So this is discrimination. This is completely illegal. It probably violates two or three amendments. So this isn't probably going to go through anyway. Uh, though California's stupid, the California state government is stupid enough, they'll probably push it through anyway. And second thing, this is like the third time this has been tried in California. As early as about a year and a half ago, Stockton, California did the same thing. They gave like, I think it was something like $1,200 a month to 200 people just to try this universal basic income. And yeah, it failed it crashed and burned. It took them three months to stop doing it. And that was for only 200 people. Absolutely incredible. We're just never going to learn. But the state, they want to go so communist. They want to go so communist. They'll try and do this. Now, Palm Springs might have a little easier time getting through this because Palm Springs, I don't know if you've been there, a lot of gay and transgenders are in gay, les lesbian and transgenders are in Palm Springs. I think it's majority um, LGBTQY XWZV asterisk uh, group in Palm Springs. So that's not, and not a surprise. It's probably some mayor wants to get reelected. It is an election year. Other news, a school nurse in Connecticut was suspended uh, for revealing on Facebook that one of her 11-year-old students is also a patient for puberty blockers. And uh, they decided never to tell the parents about it. So they started giving this little girl puberty blockers because she said she felt like a boy. And at first I thought this gal, this gal whose name is Kathleen Catterford, a 77-year-old nurse, I thought she was actually just bragging that they were... No, she wasn't. She was being critical of the school district. She posted this on Facebook, quote, investigate the school system curriculum. CT is a very socially liberal, gender-confused state. That's Connecticut. As public school nurse, I have an 11-year-old female student on puberty blockers and a dozen identifying as non-binary, all but two keeping this secret from their parents with the help of their teachers. Social, social workers and school administration, uh, I'm sorry, uh, parents with the help of teachers, social workers, and school administration. Teachers and social workers are spending 37.5 hours a week influencing our children, not necessarily teaching our children what you think is being taught. There's something disturbing. So what did the school do? They found out, and she posted this to a mother's apparent site. So what did she do? What would the school do? They suspended her pending a firing. If I were her, I'd get a lawyer right off the bat and get ready to sue him. Well, um, the superintendent of the school, doctor, and you love that doctor, you get doctor of education, just call yourself miss, Dr. Leslie Torres Rodriguez. Of course, she also has a hyphenated name, so you can tell this is, this woman must be a wonder, must be a treat. She sent a letter out. I'm not going to read the entire letter, uh, but she said each member of our School community matters. With deep regret, we write to inform you that a school nurse made inappropriate comments regarding lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer, and questioning LGBTQ+. In other words, this gal, we're giving your kids drugs that you don't know about, and what's the and they they she's calling that transgender or anti-LGBTQ. That's what she's calling it. That's why she was suspended. By the way. Hartford Public Schools students, uh, the comments were, and by the way, two public 
uh, Hartford Public Schools students on social media. She actually didn't make the post to public school students. She made it to other parents. So that's not true. The comments were made in Facebook in a Facebook group and described a private and personal details about a specific student. She doesn't name that specific student, but um, those personal and private information about that student should have been should have been given to that, those parents before they actually did it. The nurse used a personal face, personal social media account. However, the manner in which the comments were shared and the values they express are totally inconsistent with what we stand for. HPS does not tolerate any language that could be harmful to our community. Nothing she said was harmful. I read you about half the post. Nothing she said was harmful. All she said is the school is evil for what they're doing. That's what she said. And that people, parents, need to really understand what they're doing, what what their school's like before they send them to the school. So, blah, 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 blah. And we take this matter and any incident that impacts our students' well-being very seriously, ensuring our schools are a safe place for students. They don't sound all that safe to me if they're injecting kids with, with drugs. So, this is a story that is going to get hotter especially after Loudoun County in Virginia got nailed. As far as I'm concerned, every one of those teachers who participated in this, every one of the faculty that permit, uh, that participated in this, every school board member that participated in this or approved this, they should, any administration official who approved this and knew about it, all fired, start them all over again. And I'll say it again, because I can't say it enough, get your kids out of public school, get them into some sort of private school, figure it out. We always met, we always had a rough time with finances, and we always we figured out how to get our kids into private school or homeschool your kids, because these schools are turning into an absolute disaster. Okay, and then just a final story. Um, China, who apparently had only 5,500 people die, are shutting down their, their country now because of the BA2, the Omicron BA2 virus. Uh, and now, not only are they shutting places down, not only are they shutting businesses down, not only are they putting steel shutters on houses to make sure people can't even see the light of day because apparently Omicron spreads through windows. They are now killing the pets of any owners that had caught the Omicron virus. Remember, hey, China was always telling us the truth. They only had 5,500 deaths from the, uh, from the uh, uh, China virus, right? They were doing the best in the world. They were the first ones they came up from a vaccine. Well, they stole the vaccine from us, but they came up from a vaccine. They shouldn't have any worries about it, right? Yeah, that's 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 crap. <laughs> it's apparently they're they're dying again. Okay, all right. So this is this is a story I really wanted to do. This is a story I really wanted to do, and uh, actually, I think I'm probably gonna do it in this form, the podcast in this format from now format from now on because it seems to be lot more comfortable and I don't have to ramble on about one or two stories. I can go into seven or eight stories and not necessarily political stories. So the Wall Street Journal is a very expensive newspaper. I pay a lot for the Wall Street Journal and I know why I pay a lot for the Wall Street Journal because they give me stuff like this. So first off, here's a little audio clip from TikTok. And then we're going to talk, not particularly about this clip, but about TikTok. Listen to this poor gal. So I keep getting um, crickets in my house. I don't know why. I've never had a cricket problem before, but I, I looked it up and apparently it's it's really bad luck to kick them out of your house. Like you're not supposed to kick them out of your house, but like what am I supposed to do? Like let you stay here? Now there's like 36 crickets running around because I did kick out one. And let me tell you, I had a really, really horrible week after that. And now they're just running around. And I'm like, 
please move. I just want to make a piece of toast and you're in my way. And I open a cabinet and it's just like, oh, hey, Cricket, that I can't kick out of my house. Can you please just leave? I don't want to kick you out. I just want to ask you nicely to leave. My house is just infested with crickets. And there's nothing I can do about it. Okay, a few things here. Uh, no, the superstition is you don't kill a cricket in the house. Don't. It's not that you can't pick them up and throw them outside. And 36 crickets, not quite an infestation. But before before we start making fun of this gal, I, I got to tell you, I if you see the video, go to dumbassestalkingpolitics.com and take a look at it. She actually looks like she's got some serious mental problems. She looks like she is way off. And by the way, crickets aren't cockroaches. I mean, they're just not... But the I can't kick cricket? Why not? Why can't you kill them? I mean, that's a Japan. That's actually a Japanese superstition. It's not even American superstition. So, but we don't want. I don't want to make fun of her because of that. But what I do find, I, because I do find that sad. I think she's got some serious issues. The question is, why did she put this up in the first place? Why would she put this up on social media? Why do people feel the need? To put every aspect of their lives on social media. I mean, I, I I maybe have 50 videos up, and that's through my life. I've been a member of YouTube for 10 years, and I have never put that much up. And TikTok is the worst of these platforms, because it's so easy to stick up a TikTok video. Listen, I've always been anti-social media, especially for kids. I, I think it's terrible for kids. The Wall Street Journal has released an article this weekend called Tick, The TikTok Brain, explained by the, I'm sorry, the article's called The TikTok Brain Explained by a gal named Julie Jargon. It talks about the damage that TikTok does to the mind of a child and the behaviors that come to pass, uh, behaviors that happen when we just are too much on that platform. And by the way, I, I do wanna I do wanna make clear, and I'm gonna make this clear a couple times, it's not just TikTok. Facebook is the same way. Twitter is the same way. Snapchat, Instagram, YouTube, any any social media platform is like this. So here's how I'm not gonna read the entire article. I'm just gonna read about four paragraphs, but I'll give you a summary of what the article says. So the article starts, remember the good old days when kids watched YouTube all day? Now that they binge on 15 second TikToks, those YouTube clips seem like PBS documentaries. Many parents tell me their kids can't sit through, a feature, sit through feature films anymore because to them the movies feel painfully slow. Others observe their kids struggling to focus on homework and reading a book? Forget it. What about what is happening to kids' brains? Again, I want I want to be very clear. the The reason the Wall Street Journal, which is a a, a pretty pretty moderate, it's a moderately conservative paper, the reason they're really concentrating on um, TikTok is because TikTok is a Chinese company, and the company TikTok is evil. It is an evil company. But they could sit there and talk about the same thing for um, uh, for Snapchat, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Matter of fact, Facebook was the one that came up with this first. This is intentionally done stuff. So let's not say it's all TikTok. Okay, continuing with the next couple of paragraphs. Then we'll just talk about it. Quote, it is hard to look at increasing trends in media consumption of all types, media multitasking and rates of ADHD in young people, and not include that there is a decrease in their attention span, end quote, said Carl Marcy, a psychiatrist at Massachusetts General Hospital in Boston. Now, I do have something to say about this ADHD thing, and I'm not sure if I'm right or wrong, I, I don't know, but it sure seems like people are also diagnosing ADHD way too much. 
it's not a I like the way this article explains things because I don't think this has anything to do with ADHD. I think what this mostly has to do is with TikTok itself. Continuing, links between attention deficit hyperactivity disorder diagnosis and screen time are subject to debate. Well, that's what I just said. Since many factors could account for a steady rise in cases. Yet even parents whose children don't qualify for the medical diagnosis say their kids are more distracted. Emerging emerging research suggests that watching short, fast-paced videos makes it harder for the kids to sustain activities that don't offer instant and constant gratification. And I'm I'm not going to, again, that's all I'm going to read of the article, because I'm already going over, and it's a very long article. But I do got to pay uh, the Wall Street Journal a compliment, because this is stuff that's just not talked to any, uh, talked about enough today. So, some of the highlights. Um, studies have been done on how TikTok affects people, and where they've affected, where these research studies have come from, believe it or not, China the home of TikTok, they discovered that the reward center of the brain is activated, pumping out hormones that are basically the same hormones that are used by drugs to create addiction. All right, we'll get into the hormones in a few minutes. The studies were so illuminating to China that China actually put restrictions. For example, Children under the age of 13 are not allowed to use TikTok at all, or their version of TikTok. They give it a different name. And children between 13 and 15, the app is actually blocked after 9 p.m. So they're forcing, again, this is the government being, it's a communist country, so the government is the parent in countries like that. They're actually forcing kids off of TikTok. And they've also limited the type of information that can be on TikTok. So they really are closely monitoring and censoring TikTok in China. Here, we have no such thing. Then it talks about how it affects the brain. Now, what they basically say is that schoolwork, reading, writing, arithmetic, takes something called focus. That makes sense. Focus is actually part of the prefrontal cortex. Now in now in young ad- children and young adults the prefrontal cortex takes a long time to develop up to the age of 25 drug users and of course drug users TikTok users uh, lots of different people someone gets hit in the head that might take the prefrontal cortex longer to develop but all of that stuff is the prefrontal cortex and that's basically self discipline focus that's all part of that brain Now, the prefrontal cortex becomes developed through what? Exercise, like everything else. This is what makes school so important. Doing your homework. Doing and finishing your homework. Having that discipline. Reading. Writing. Even watching a a, a long movie with with a plot. I mean a real plot. I'm not talking about an action film where they say four words or a Sylvester Stallone movie. I'm talking about a real movie. Okay, because TikTok videos are no longer than 10 minutes. And remember, they used to be a minute. Then they went to three minutes. Now they're 10 minutes are the max length. Kids get used to the really speedy interactions and they're not really working their prefrontal cortex. They're not exercising their prefrontal cortex, which is why they can't sit through a movie. They can't sit through a TV show. They can't read books because they can't keep focused long enough because their brains are constantly moving. That's one of the reasons why people who are dealing with sleep disorders, the first thing you should do, get uh, after 8 o'clock, put the phone down. Stay away from the screens because they excite the brain. Um, We can see that children are affected. I see it. You, most children, especially ones that are on, they cannot stay on one music station, for example. They'll constantly, they, they, oh, I love this song. And they hear four notes of the song. They'll change the radio station. I can't say whose kids do this, but let me just say someone I'm very close to, their kids do this all the time. They start cruising through television stations. They can never find 
They can never find a movie that they want to watch, and they'll end up watching 20-minute movies because they can't go more 20-minute, I'm not movies, but TV shows because they can't go beyond that. Now, dopamine is the actual hormone that is the big problem. Now, dopamine is released when you uh, get a reward, when you get excited. So, for example... You get you get an award, you're excited, you feel all happy, that's dopamine. Um, dopamine is also uh, the hormone that runners get when they go on, um, when they're doing very long distances and they feel kind of dizzy and, and happy. That's that called the second wind. That's dopamine. That's a, dope, a mix of dopamine and endorphins. But dopamine is also the hormone that's released... When you snort coke, when you take crack, when you shoot heroin. And that dopamine rush that comes running through you is so heavy. There's so much dopamine, you get a really strong high. But it's very short high. And then what eventually happens is you crash faster. That's what makes cocaine and heroin so addictive. It's because there's such a rush of the of the dopamine and endorphins that your body just can't handle it and ends up dumping it. It also is why once you let's say cocaine is the common one, but once you snort cocaine or smoke crack or meth, you need more and more and more of it to get high because eventually dopamine runs out. Eventually the dopamine rush isn't enough and you need more of it. Now this is released when people get that little high. When that notification comes out that says someone liked your video, that dopamine rush hits you, especially kids. And it hits them hard. It's a high. And that's where the screen addiction comes from. And by the way, we've always known that. That is not something that is brand new. We've always known that. And Facebook admits that's what they do. Instagram admits that's what they do. They give you these little hits. And Facebook was the one who started it. But Twitter does it. I mean, I get notifications from Twitter all the time, and I don't even know why. I don't know what they're for. Well, because I'm not all that popular on Twitter, so I don't get people commenting or any of my stuff goes viral. And I really don't care. So... These are the solutions. So they're basically bringing up a very good scientific argument why TikTok is very dangerous for young children. And again, all social media is very dangerous for young children. So they come up with some solutions. The first thing is swap screen time for real time. This is another problem our children are having. They're not social anymore. When a child, when a girl goes out on a date with a boy... I can guarantee you, you'll see them both on the phone and they won't be talking to each other. Well, what what this gal says, she says, get outside, what um, Jargon says, get outside, get some exercise, get together with real people, talk to real people. Practice stopping social media, which means eight o'clock every night, get off of social media. And the parents have to be active here. Now, what Jargon said was, the kids should practice this. No, the parents need to take it away from them because they're not going to do it on their own. This is something that the Jews really have in their religion that really is helpful here. On Saturday, I believe it's Saturdays. It's a holy day. It's week every Saturday. They actually have to get off of all electronics. They can't drive cars. So what do they are, are they forced to do? They're forced to actually talk to each other or read a book. This is fantastic. I mean, Catholics should do this. I don't know why we gave that one up. Now, I, I use management tools. For example, there are management tools on the phone. There are management tools in the, the uh, cell provider. There are managed tools within the applications themselves. Set time limits. Kid can't be on it for more than two hours or an hour. Or set times that that you can go on and can't go off. Set it to end at 8 o'clock. Now, a lot of people say 9 o'clock. I'd say 8. I'd even say 7. 
wouldn't be a bad time. It should be a couple hours before the kid goes to bed. And finally, make sure the kid does go to bed. One of the problems with screens keeps kids up. It gives them insomnia. Make sure they get a good seven to eight hours of sleep a night. Of course, it's recommended eight hours, but whatever works. If you can get them to bed for seven hours, that's great. And make sure they get to bed at a decent time. It doesn't help uh, to getting seven hours when you go to bed at two or three o'clock in the morning and then wake up at 10, 11. Make sure it is night sleeping. That is an issue. I know, hard to believe, but there are kids that have that issue. Now, I also have my own ideas. Don't give kids phones in the first place. If the kid needs a phone for whatever reason, buy them phones with restricted internet or no internet. You can go get a phones that they can only call and text you. Use monitoring tools. And by monitoring tools, I mean every word that the kid goes, everything that the kid posts, every picture that the kid posts is monitored secretly. And you can look it up and see what they're doing. And those monitors include key loggers. That way, you can get the kids' passwords to those applications. Now, I know a lot of parents today will say, well, what about the kids' right to privacy? Kids don't have a right to privacy. Kids are stupid. Kids don't have any rights. I used monitoring tools. I still use them today. And I learned some great things on Facebook. This was with my kids before Facebook was huge. But I learned a lot of things, and I curbed how they worked. And then the other thing is, if they do have phones, okay, make sure they don't install the app on the uh, on the phone. They can't they can't actually use the app. I got this one from Ben Shapiro. He doesn't have any social media on his phone, and he uses it constantly. He only uses it when he's sitting at a computer. Make the kids do that. That sounds like a good idea. Or just simply don't allow the kids to use social media at all. Easier said than done. But that's where a parent has to be a parent and that parent has to work. Social media and smartphones are going to be the biggest disaster of our generation, uh, of this generation. And our society is going to hurt. Children are becoming self-centered narcissists with attention spans of a crackhead. Here's a newsflash and I tell this to every kid I see with a thing. You know what? You're posting a selfie. No one cares. They don't understand. Nobody cares. All children are becoming dumber. They're becoming antisocial, antisocial, and they're becoming depressed. What's scary is we're going to be depending on these kids to innovate in the future, to take care of us in the future. But meanwhile, they can't even go on a date. I tell you what, don't be surprised. In 10 years, if they restrict cell phone usage and cell phones for kids until they're 21. I'm pretty sure that's going to happen. Especially as, and there are studies that are happening now, they just don't have the data yet because the the smartphone is way too new. Um, And by the way, this isn't just limited to to smartphones and social media platforms. It's limited, limited to a lot of things. Not just TikTok. Social media, tablets, computers, the internet, video games, pornography, all the things that you can get online today. All of that stuff out there is affecting our kids. I think it's time we deal with it before it's too late. And the best way to deal with it is the family deals with it. Okay, you guys have a great day. Uh, We'll talk to you tomorrow. Uh, Visit my website. This is Gene, and you've listened to Dumbasses Talking Politics. (laughs) 